Paddy Canavan and his two sons, James and Connor, are spending an afternoon at the races. James fancies himself as a man with an eye for the horses, but Connor, if the truth were told, would rather be at home with his PlayStation. Along the way, we'll be watching how they fill in a betting slip, scan the newspaper for the racing guide, and get some tips on filling out a competition entry form. Reading and writing difficulties affect people in many different ways, and over the coming weeks, we'll be hearing from a variety of people who have returned to learning and are making progress with their reading and writing. This week, Michael Briady and Joan Smith talk about the benefits of returning to learning. I went out to work at a young age. I was out um, kind of, must have been 14 when I went out to work. If you meant to do an interview or that, like normally the first thing they'd ask you like is, what education have you? And if you, if you said like you had no leaving cert or that, and you left at an early age, nine, maybe 10 or 12, They'd say, you know, well, we'll get back to you and we'll let you know. But they'd never come back. Shops now, or if you had to go into a supermarket or anything like that, I wouldn't dream of it. You know, where I went into a hospital, it was kind of awards made and you didn't have to do any writing or anything like that. Or even in a restaurant, I wouldn't even dream of it because I'd have to take somebody's order and I wouldn't have to write or spell it. I remember one night I was reading a story to my daughter and I was reading it as I knew it not as it was being wrote. And she said to me then, no, that's wrong, Daddy. She said, that word isn't in there, she said. So I said to her, oh, that's the way I say it. So I kind of pushed it off that way. Like. But other times I'd, uh, if I was asked to help them, I'd make up every excuse, like, you know. I had to go somewhere, do something, or ask Mammy, like, you know, I don't know that word or something. And I'd move out, maybe go down the road for a walk or something like that. Pressure is terrible. You know, even for my little one now, to, for me to read her a story at night, I'd read the story and I'd, I'd maybe put in my own words, you know, where the words I couldn't read. And, um, Mummy, she said, Daddy didn't read it like that to me. We'll hear more from Michael and Joan later, but now it's off to the races. What are you doing? Shh. Um, 50 pound on speed motion at the 3 pm at Leperstone tomorrow. 50 quid in a horse? That's going to kill you when he finds out. That's not going to find out, is he? Besides, I've had a tip off, haven't I? If you had any sense, of course you don't, you do the same. Ash, your horses are boring anyway. On his way to the races, James stopped off to place a bet in his local bookmakers. Obviously no stranger to the bookies, James filled out the betting slip in no time. Let's look again at what he's written. Um, 50 pound on speed motion at the 3 p.m. at Leperstone tomorrow. The stake is clear enough, James is betting £50, and he also shows that the bet is to win. Next, he writes the name of his chosen horse, Speed Merchant. Simple enough so far. If you weren't familiar with racing and betting, the next line could look like some sort of code. In fact, what James has done is quite common. He's shortened the words he needs to use. There are lots of times when you might want to shorten a word. Not enough space not enough time, and so on. Other examples of shortened words are CD for compact disc, TEL for telephone, and KG for kilogram. If you're not familiar with the shorter version of some words you come across, you may have to ask someone. But we'll be looking at more examples of shortening words later in the programme. Because he's in a hurry, James has shortened the information he needs to give about the time of the race and the meeting. 50 quid in a horse? 
That's going to kill you when you get back. Dad's not going to find out, is he? He's written three to indicate that it's the three o'clock race. LP, which is short for Leopardstown. And just so there's no confusion, Sun, which is short for Sunday, the day the race is running. See, what you want to do is you want to spread the risk. A little over the whole day. There's no point in putting all your money on the one horse. And no point at all. Oh, it's a mugs game, I'm telling you. Hypocrite. You horses, horses, horses. That's all they ever talk about. Yeah, well, <laughs> uh, we don't like to talk too Can't believe Dad wouldn't let me bring my Walkman. At least then I wouldn't have to listen to their non-stop drone of horses. I wish they just left me at home. PlayStation's better than the races any day. Show sure, what difference does it make to them? They don't even know I'm here. Hey, Dad, did I tell you about the new PlayStation game I'm going to get? Siphon Filter 2. It's cool, right? You can play as the sky, and you can get this sniper rifle. And you can point it right at the guy's head, and then shoot them. It's deadly. Is that right, son? <laughs> well, I tell you, it's one hell of a dream. That's right, Dad. I'll pay. Tenor should do it. You do it, will you? We have to get some deed and I'm starving. Which one? Len. Typical. I'm just a skinny to me. I bet that's why they brought me along. To run around after them. Seven pounds, eight pounds, nine pounds, and a ten. May as well check the tyres while I'm at it. <laughs> Not that I'll get any thanks for it. How does this work? All right. Have to check it on this chart here. Opal. Vectra. Front. Rear. Um, 23, 26. Spot on. Got that right. Hey, Dad. What were you thinking of betting on? I was thinking of them. Um The bower at the three o'clock. Oh, would you look at that? That one's called Speed Merchant. I think you should bet on that one, Dad. Looks like a good horse. Yeah, we better be going or, or we're going to be late. Anyway, Speed Merchant doesn't like hard ground. What do you mean? He prefers the softer turf. To decide which horse he's going to bet on, Paddy needed to check the newspaper listings for that day's races. Let's see how he did it. I was thinking three o'clock. The Bower. When you're scanning a piece of text, you don't have to read every word. Just concentrate on the particular word or number you're looking for. In many cases, the information is gathered under headings. In this case, the times of the races. In Paddy's case, he was looking for a horse called the Bower in the three o'clock race. So there were two pieces of information he needed to find. Firstly, he scanned the paper to find the three o'clock race. And then under that heading, he looked down the list to find the name of his horse. The Bower. You'll have noticed earlier that when Connor was checking the tyre pressure on the car, he scanned the chart to find the correct pressure using the same method. The car is an opal, so he looked for that word first. Opal. Then he found the make of car, a vectra. vectra. Along the top of the chart, he found the pressure for the front and rear tyres. And then 
It was just a question of running his finger down the columns again until he found the right pressure for a Vectra. So when are we leaving? Not until the last race is finished. Relax, son. We just got here. It's gonna be great crack. Yeah. Come on, head, loosen up. You know his problem. It's tight. <laughs> it's more muddy than the rest of us put together. Come on, live a little. I'm not tight. Oh yeah. What about all that money you've been saving for siphon filter too? I mean that's different. Tight. You leave him alone. He's entitled to spend his money whatever way he likes. Anyway. You can take a leaf out of his book the way you spend cash. Tree. Tree thirty. He races here. Four. Four thirty. Five. Five thirty. Five thirty. You're never going to get out of here. Bet they don't even notice I'm gone. And even if they do, they're probably more interested in their stupid horses. I should see if I care. I'd rather be on my own anyway. They'll be sorry later when they can't find me. Ma, I'll kill them. This is so boring. What's this? A competition? I could do it winning 50 quid. Oh, it'd be great if I won. I could get that game tomorrow. Now what are they looking for here? My name, my address, 22, Harbour Avenue, Dublin, Road, Swords, County Dublin. That should do. Number seven's not a bad looking horse. I wonder what he's called. 